The Canadians are killing their own people legally via euthanasia. I'm Levi Bimba, and this is Dulos. Before today's episode, if you are looking for a proven plan for financial success, a guaranteed way to get out of debt, stay out of debt, and build long-term durable wealth, then contact me, Levi Bimba, at RamseyCoach.com slash Dulos Financial Coaching for a free 30-minute consultation to sit down and talk to you about your goals, your dreams, what kind of situation that you're in financially, and I can help you get on that path to building long-term durable wealth to get you out of the out of whatever financial struggle you may be in. So contact me for a free consultation at RamseyCoach.com slash Coaching today. So many times we are told in the Bible that the world is full of darkness and that we as Christians are the children of light because we are in Christ, not because we are better, not because we have more morality than the world, so to speak, but it's because we have been made new in Christ by coming to faith in Christ. Ephesians 5, 8 in the Legacy Standard Bible, it says, for you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So as Paul says, uh, and as God via Paul tells us as Christians, before we, we became saved, we were formerly darkness. We were formerly walking in a darkened, evil a wretched state, not even knowing that we were in darkness because we were blinded by the God of this world, who is Satan, the small g God. Obviously, God is sovereign over all things. He created the world. He sustains it. He ordains all things that whatever comes to pass, God has ordained it. And so, but the but the devil in this time uh, is the God of this world, small g, and he is allowed to do what God has permitted him to do. As Martin Luther said, the devil is God's devil. So the devil never does anything outside of God's permission. And we see this clearly really in the book of Job. If you go read the first two chapters, you see clearly Satan asking for permission to go touch one of God's servants. But we are children of light as Christians. We are walking in the light and ought to be walking in the light if we are truly uh, Christians. And so in 1 Thessalonians 5.5 5, in the Legacy Standard, it says, For you are all sons of light and sons of day. We are not of night nor of darkness. So there again, you see the distinction between light and dark. There's only two religions in the world. It's the religion of human achievement or, or the religion of Christ's achievement on the cross by dying on the cross for sinners. And by his death, we come to faith in him and have our righteousness uh, received. Uh, really, our righteousness comes from Christ because we have put our, fla- our put our faith in him. And that makes us children of light, not because, again, not because cr- Christians are naturally better than the world, but because of the grace of God working in us to re- revive us from the dead, bringing us out of darkness. Now we have new life in Christ to be able to walk as children of the light, as the Bible tells us. But this darkness that is in the world today, the darkness that we are seeing, this is a darkness that engulfs the world in every single facet of life, whether it's government, whether it's sports, whether it's media, whether it's academia, and then especially even in medicine, now, that, especially nowadays that we're seeing the rise of transgenderism and, and child mutil- mutil- mutilization because of uh, this, this uh, ideology that is really spreading throughout the world. And so we are seeing the convergence of this overwhelming darkness at work in the Canadian government, especially, and its medical apparatus. And euthanasia was legally was legalized in 2015. And euthanasia is the act or practice of killing or permitting the death of hopelessly sick or injured individuals, such as persons or domestic animals, in a relatively painless way for reasons of mercy. It's interesting that they use mercy, and that, and that definition is according to Merriam-Webster, but they use uh, mercy because it's seen as something that you're doing for the good of the other person because they're going through so much pain, so much trauma. And I don't want to uh, belittle belittle people that are going through constant pain because, I mean, God, by God's grace, I've never had a situation where I'm in constant pain or constant discomfort. So I'm not going to pretend like I know what that's like. Uh, so, but again, um, the morality that God has revealed to us doesn't stop at whether or not I've experienced something or not. I don't have to experience uh, rape to know it's wrong. I don't have to experience uh, being assaulted or being beat up to know that beating somebody up is wrong. So I don't. I want to put those juvenile arguments aside, uh, but I do also at the same time don't want to act like constant pain is nothing and people should just get over it. But I do want to focus in on the fact that the world is caught up in darkness. Anything that the world does, we need to take note of it, especially as Christians, and figure out, is this something from God or is this something from the devil, who is the God of this world, small g? 
But in, in, in Canada, he is from the uh, Oxford University, so a really smart guy. His name is Yuan Yi Zhu. He wrote an article on the Spectre entitled, Why is Canada Euthanizing the Poor? And remember, euth euthanasia is the act or practice of killing or preventing the death of hopelessly sick or, inj or injured individuals in a relatively painless way for reasons of mercy. So... And then when you read his article, you, you're saying, or at least when you read the title of his article, you see him saying, well, why is, why is Canada euthanizing the poor? It's, it really gets dicey. <laughs> the, the meaning of, euthanize, of euthanasia changes, especially as we are now seeing in Canada, according to Mr. Zhu. But he starts off his article by saying there is an endlessly repeated witticism by the poet Anatoly France that, quote, the law in its majestic equality forbids the rich as well as the poor to sleep under bridges, to beg in the streets and to steal bread, end quote. What France certainly did not foresee is that an entire country, and an, and, an, and an ostentatiously progressive one at that, has decided to take his sarcasm at face value and to its natural conclusion. Since last year, Canadian law in all its majesty has allowed both the rich as well as the poor to kill themselves if they are too poor to continue living with dignity. In fact, the ever-generous Canadian state will even pay for their deaths. What it will not do is spend money to allow them to live instead of killing themselves. So, again, this is euthanasia is meant to help people who are living with constant injuries and constant uh, debilitating uh, diseases that are really have no hope of cure to peacefully die, so, so to speak, or mercifully die. And putting the morality of that aside, this instance, at least in the first two paragraphs, this is centering on people who have money and people who don't. And uh, if we're going to make decisions on who has money and who has and who doesn't, and we're going to make value judgments based on what they have, this doesn't sound like a, 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 a policy of mercy to me, nor should it to you. Because who determines who's rich and who's poor? What level of money do you have? That's really the, the dangerous ground that we are now seeing happening in Canada. Uh, but he continues, as with most slippery slopes, it all began with a strongly worded denial that it exists in 2015. The Supreme Court of Canada reversed 22 years of its own jurisprudence by striking down the country's ban on assisted suicide as unconstitutional, blithely dismissing fears that the ruling that the ruling would, quote, initiate a descent down a slippery slope into homicide against a ver against a vulnerable as founded on, quote, anecdotal examples. And again, this is the same kind of argument that when people bring up abortion, so to speak, and they, they always want to use the anecdotal examples to justify the reason why abortion should be legal. Like what, for the woman who gets raped or the child who's molested by her father and she gets impregnated by him, should they have to keep the baby? And therefore, if they if, if you think that's wrong, then you should then you should automatically uh, be pro abortion all the way. And people don't like when we say, well, we're not using those examples. And, and especially in those cases, even if those uh, and those things do happen, even though they're rare, according to the Guttmacher Institute, 99 percent of abortions are for convenience. But those the rape and the molestation does happen. But even in those instances, I think the rapist in should die the, and the father or the uncle, whoever abused the young girl should die because that is a very personal act. And you are denying really and attacking the person who was made in God, God's image, the woman who's made in God's image. And for that violation, I think you should die. And that's according to Old Testament law. But using those anecdotal examples to justify abortion is 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 uh, is wrong and should not be held to. But a lot of people on the left and the political left and people who are not saved use that argument and say, well, what about these exceptions? Therefore, the whole case of abortion should be made based on those anecdotal examples. But when it comes to these anecdotal examples of people who are poor and now in pretty much being manipulated into killing themselves and people are saying, hey, hold on, hold on. This is a slippery slope. This is something dangerous. And all of a sudden, the Supreme Court of Canada says, oh, we don't need to worry about that. That's those are just anecdotal. Those are just anecdotal examples. So it's unbalanced reasoning, depending on the political issue or the moral issue at hand. Mr. Zhu continues in his article. He says the next the next year, Parliament duly enacted legislation allowing euthanasia, but only for those who suffer from a terminal illness whose natural death was, quote, reasonably foreseeable, like cancer or some other um, really, um, you know, really death inducing disease uh, on somebody's body. He continues, it only took five years for the when the Canadian Parliament enacted Bill C-7, a sweeping euthanasia law, which repealed the, quote, reasonably foreseeable, end quote, requirement and the requirement that, that the that the condition should be, quote, terminal. Now, as long as someone is suffering from an illness or disability, which cannot be relieved under conditions that you consider acceptable, which is what, what he quotes in the in the language of that law. So who's determining what's acceptable? 
They can take advantage of what is now known euphemistically as medical assistance in dying, made for short, for free. Soon enough, Canadians from across the country discovered that, th that although they would otherwise prefer to live, they were too poor to improve their conditions to a degree which was acceptable. So these are people now who cannot afford the treatment that they need to stay alive because they want to stay alive, but because they can't afford it, now they're being ushered into this category of, well, maybe we should put these people to death. And and lest you think that this is uh, something that's still merciful, the money gets wrapped up into the reasonings here, and you'll see in just a second. So he continues in his article, and he says, not, coincident not coincidentally, Canada has some of the lowest social care spending of any industrialized country. Palliative care is only accessible to a minority, and waiting times in the public health care sector can be unbearable to the point where the same Supreme Court, which legalized euthanasia, declared those waiting times to be a violation of the right to life back in 2005. So it's so ironic that the same Supreme Court who is now legalizing euthanasia back about 15 years ago, 17 years ago, declared that if you have to wait in line too long to get the necessary care that you need to stay alive, that's going against your right to life. That's unconstitutional. But now 17 years later, they're now legalizing the death of these same people who they thought were being violated of the right to life because the lines to get the care that they needed to stay alive was too long. And so we just see, again, when you when the world is trying to arrive at truth and, and trying to do things that are just and moral and good, Sometimes they get it right, but a lot of times they get it wrong. And sometimes they're, and a lot of times they contradict themselves. They contradict themselves because they don't really have the moral underpinnings, the moral foundation of the word of God uh, in their minds, as in their hearts, because they don't they haven't come to faith in Christ. And so even though Republicans, conservatives, obviously, I think if you take the Bible and, and, and were to use that as a mirror, against the Republicans or the Democrats or conservatives or liberals, you, the Bible will more closely align, or I, would, I should say the conservatives will more closely align with what the Bible has to say. But that does not mean that the conservatives get it right all the time. There's issues that they still get wrong. A lot of it they get wrong, just like uh, people who are liberals or leftists get a lot of it, I, I would say a lot more of it wrong, but they still, both sides are still wrong because again, there's only one truth, and that's God's truth. And anything that denies or anybody who supersedes or neglects that truth is going to get something wrong on, a, on some kind of moral ground somewhere uh, because they don't have the awakening of Christ, the light of Christ in their life. Remember, going back to that distinction between, between light and darkness. But the article continues. And uh, Mr. Zhu, Mr. Zhu says that many in the healthcare sector came to the same conclusion. Even, even before Bill C-7 was enacted, reports of abuse were rife. A man with a neurodegenerative disease testified, in par testified to Parliament that nurses and a medical ethicist at a hospital tried to coerce him into killing himself by threatening to bankrupt him with extra costs or by kicking him out of the hospital and by withholding water from him for 20 days. Virtually every disability rights group in the country opposed the new law to, the, to no effect. For once, the government found it convenient to ignore those otherwise impeccably progressive groups. Since then, things have only gotten worse. And this is where it really starts to um, go dark regarding the money. And he, he pulls up another example of how uh, it says uh, he says when the family of a 35 year old disabled man who resorted to euthanasia arrived at the care home where he lived, they encountered urine on the floor spots where the feces spots where there were feces on the floor spots where your feet were just sticking like if you stood at his bedside and when and when you went to walk away your foot was literally stuck and quote so it was really this guy was living in a disgusting environment but this guy resorted so to speak or allegedly as resorted on his own will to euthanasia but he says mr Jude continues according to the canadian government the assisted suicide law is about prioritizing the individual autonomy of canadians End quote. One may wonder how much autonomy a disabled man lying in his own filth had in weighing death over life. Despite the Canadian government's insistence that assisted suicide is all about individual autonomy, it has also kept an eye on its fiscal advantages. First, First Timothy 6.10, the love of money is a root of all evil or all kinds of evil. And we're about to see that right here. Even before Bill C-7 entered into force, the country's parliamentary budget officer published a report about the cost savings it would create. Whereas the old maid regime saves $86.9 million per year, a, quote, net cost reduction, end quote, in the sterile words of the report, Bill C-7 would create an additional net savings of $62 million per year, which if you add that up, that's about $150 million. So the Canadian government is looking at this and saying, well, if we kill these people, or if we kill more people, or expand the 
the uh, qualifications or the categories of people who are now allowed to be euthanized, we're going to save an additional $62 million, which is a lot of money. But again, these are people's lives that we're actually putting in the ground. Healthcare, particularly for those suffering from chronic conditions, is expensive. But assisted suicide only costs the taxpayer $2,327 per case, which to me, it's, a, it's again, it goes back to the world's thinking of how it's so jumbled and so backwards. What could, because when you, you're dealing with issues of murder or rape, for example, like I brought up earlier, where people are killing other people, where people are violating women in the most intimate and, and destructive way, the thing worse than rape, I think I would say, is murder. Because obviously you can't come back from that rape. Thankfully, some women, a lot of women are able to recover in some respect from a, that tragic incident. But the fact that people are, are not even willing to entertain the idea that these murderers should be put to death or these rapists should be put to death, but they're willing to entertain the idea of killing people who are who still want to stay alive. Some people who may be even being coerced or tricked or pushed into euthanasia who want to stay alive, but they're not willing to even entertain the idea of putting people who have killed other people, who have raped other people to death. This shows the darkened thinking, the darkened mind of the world. And, and again, it covers every area and including the government. And some people, some people would say, especially the government. But Mr. Zhu continues and he says, and of course, those who those who have to rely wholly on government provided Medicare pose a far greater burden on the exchequer than those who have savings or private insurance. And yet Canada's lavishly subsidized media, with some honorable exceptions, has expressed remarkably little curiosity about the open social murder of citizens in one of the world's wealthiest countries. Perhaps like many doctors, journalists are afraid of being accused of being unprogressive for questioning the new culture of death. A fatal accusation in polite circles. So people are so afraid. And again, I think this goes back to the whole thing of how uh, Satan really knows how to play on our egos, even as Christians. We we want to be nice. We don't want to come across as mean and condescending and judgmental and all, the, all of these things. So we never question anything. We never question anybody's belief. We never challenge anybody in what they say or what they believe because we just want to come across as nice, come across as agreeable because we don't want people attacking us and harming us and all of these kinds of things. But we have to be reminded as Christians that Jesus did say, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. That is the that is the mandate of the Christian. That is what we should expect. It shouldn't be a surprise. Peter says, don't be a surprise when fiery trials come against you because this is what is supposed to happen as Christians. But these journalists who are not willing to even ask the question of, should we really be killing people? They don't want to be labeled unprogressive. They don't want to be labeled like they're not down with the movement or down with the cause because, again, it goes back to the issue of pride. But he ends his article by saying, Canada's public broadcaster, which in 2020 reassured Canadians that there was, quote, no link between poverty choosing medically or choose and choosing medically ex assisted death has had little to say about any of the subsequent developments next year the floodgates will open even further when those suffering from mental illness another disproportionately poor group become eligible for assisted suicide although enthusiastic doctors and nurses have already preempted the law there is already talk of allowing mature minors access to access to euthanasia too just think of the lifetime savings but remember slippery slopes are always a fallacy so it's just getting darker and darker and worse and worse. And the whole slippery slope argument is actually a true thing because <laughs> you open up the door for one evil it's going to degenerate into another because the natural man does not receive the things of spirit of the, uh, does not receive the things of the spirit of God. A culture who denies God's existence, who uh, who goes against God's being, who who is in rebellion against God is going to descend into evil and chaos and destruction. And we're seeing it before our very eyes today. But. The good news is that God is still in control. God is still on his throne. And though euthanasia may be on the uptake in, in Canada, and though we may be seeing more and more evils ahead of us, we still, as Christians, can trust in the sovereign, the sovereignty of God, the, the plan of God to glorify himself, even in the midst of a darker and darker world, knowing that the light of the gospel will shine brighter and brighter, no matter what the government may do, even if it does end up euthanizing its own people. So we can take heart in that. And so thank you for listening today. And we'll see you on the next episode of New Laws.